anger going. The waves must have been three feet tall, but I'm exaggerating. But in nautical terms and measurements, I would guess that the chop was probably a foot and a half at least, and maybe approaching two feet. It was some pretty big waves, and they were very consistent. I mean, it was not just random waves. It was a lot of waves, white caps all over everywhere, and the wind was blowing. And it was blowing downstream, and we had to go back upstream. So we're in a little open bow, 16-foot boat which is small. It's like from me to Cindy right now, just about. It's not a big boat. And um, so a friend of mine and I went into the front of the open bow and kind of snapped up the, the front cover of vinyl over so we were covered up to about here. And um, we were just getting wet, let me just say. We were getting wet. And at first it was kind of fun. Um, but after 15 or 20 minutes of that, it was a little unsettling. It's probably, and I've been on some big boats before, but it it made me think a couple of times as we were as we were being bounced around by those waves and hitting them, and the spray was coming over. It's like we're okay right now as long as the power's on in this boat. But if we had any kind of engine failure. One wave, I'm sure we would have gotten a little bit sideways and it would have taken one or two waves and we would have been swimming. And I was not scared, but I was concerned <laughs> a little bit. And I'm kind of not a risk taker usually. And so I was a little nervous. And this morning as I was thinking about this story and, and um, that experience, <coughs> the crazy thing came to mind was, did we put our life vests on? We did not. <laughs> and I'm sure of the six people, I was probably the biggest swimmer of the, of the crew. But at that time, in that little itty bitty boat on that huge body of water, I was wishing I had a bigger boat. It wasn't my boat. I was wishing we had a bigger boat. Or another boat with us, so that if we had a problem with one of the boats, we had somebody else with us. Interestingly, there were not that many boats out that afternoon as we were heading back to our houseboat. And I think in hindsight, we probably could have uh, realized that the wind comes up in the afternoons lots of times, and that day was particularly stronger than other days because that was the worst, I think, that we, we had while we were down there for that week. But that, that is kind of my story, and I'm sure you shared some interesting stories this morning, too, about being uncomfortable or maybe not being at peace with where you were at. I want to I wanna share a, a text with you this morning. If we're ready, Caitlin, are we good? Or maybe Philippians 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, even when you're on a, a rough lake in a little boat. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. That just doesn't make sense sometimes though, right? I mean, don't be anxious, and yet we worry about stuff. I don't have a job right now. I should be anxious about that. I should worry about that. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, we just cannot understand that kind of peace, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The disciples, and I've said this, it seems like every time I, I talk up here, I make this kind of a statement, but the disciples lived with Jesus for three years. They did all kinds of fun stuff together. They knew Jesus better than anyone. They saw all the miracles he performed, everything he did. And yet, Jesus had to share a very 
physical illustration with the disciples to help them understand, to get their attention. And that story is found in Mark 4, verse 35 to 41. And it's kind of similar to my story that I just shared with you. That day when evening came, Jesus, he, said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side. And they were on uh, a body of water. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him, Jesus, along, just as he was, in the boat. There were also other boats with them. Smart thinking. (laughs) A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you even care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to the disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. What Jesus is saying to them is, have peace, have faith. I am with you. I want to share another text and then talk a little bit about some of these things. John 14, 15 to 17. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever. Now, Cindy and I have conversations, and and, um, when we're talking, sometimes we'll use the words never or always. And and I say, those are big words, because that doesn't leave any any wiggle room at all. I mean, it's forever or always or never or something like that. But Jesus is using one of those big words. 